Welcome back, everybody, to round five of RM Fantasy S Experts. I am Chase. I'm Christian. We are the RM Fantasy S Experts, and this is the home of the official RM Fantasy show for Monster Energy Supercross. You guys come here every week to get all the stats on riders and tracks, everything you need to make your picks maximize points. <laughs> yep. That's how we do it. This week, heading into Oakland after a Triple Crown in Glendale. So let's get right into it. This is our race recap. So going back to Glendale last weekend, it was the first Triple Crown of the year. Here is the results. Ken Roxon, 1-1-1. One, one, one. Domination. Dominating. Eli Tomac, second. Jason Anderson, third. Cooper Webb, fourth. Justin Barsha, back in the top five. Malcolm Stewart for the wild card. Dude, we both had Brayton. <laughs> How good did he look going 7-7 seven, seven in the first two mains? I, I thought and we had somehow it Malcolm gets seven. Yeah, well, a lot of people picked Because I Malcolm. got Tomac and, and Roxon right, and I was hoping to get the wild card, Would have been too. huge. Would have been my first pick right of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something you shouldn't, you shouldn't say. Dude, I'm doing horrible. I, I had a meeting with myself These about it. These people count on you, and what's going on here? I think I'm picking with my heart. I always go for the <laughs> underdog. We're, we're changing it up this All right. Week. Any big highlights we need to talk about other than Osborne's wild night of racing? Osborne had a wild night. I mean, I had him pick second. When he took the whole shot in the first main, was leading. I felt good. Yep. Then he threw it away. Hey, um, we cannot forget. Martin! <laughs> Martin. Whole shots. Let's talk about it. Yes, that. Martin. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Not much to talk about in the whole shot of the third maiden. and that was about the only highlight of his night. He it was cool. He fit that race. Yeah, he was killing it. But, so. yeah, it, one of these times, he's going to play it out and actually Dude, finish where... Triple crowns is where he needs to shine. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about points real quick, or maybe not for you. Yeah. Me, like I said, I got two picks right plus some others, so I got 59 points. Christian with a whopping 15. Dude, it's been bad. <clears throat> it's been way bad. What about user stats? 23 perfect scores. So we had our first perfect scores of the year. Which wow. The top five most picked guys are in Predictable there. Predictable top five. You could Over say. 20% or something like that had Stewart. So it was going to wow. happen. Um, twenty Yeah, 24.9% had Mookie right in the wild card. That's the second most we've, uh, highest percentage we've ever had in wow. fantasy. So That's pretty crazy. 35% had at least two picks right. 28% play, of players had Roxon correct in first. 43 still had Tomac pick to win. Uh, more people had Barsha pick for the wild card than fifth, where he actually took, which is wild. Yeah, but you look at his last few results, like, what do you expect? Yeah. And more people had AC to win than Webb. <laughs> still. Ugh. They are still high up on AC, but what do you do? <laughs> A lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. We got Osborne, which, is he injured? Is he coming back this weekend? I think he's racing this weekend. Yeah. I haven't heard he's out. I mean, he crashed. He okay. doesn't seem like it's going to be anything major. Right. Though. But Bogle, he had a really bad crash in one of those starts. Miss Oakland. So he's going to be out for Oakland. Uh, Benny, or Chris Blows. Yeah, that was rough. In he's the third hurt. Main. Hopefully he's okay. Chad Reed? Didn't finish. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, I, don't I don't know about that. Hurt, I, I, don't, I haven't heard he's hurt. But then yeah. also Benny Bloss, who is crashed on per, uh, concussion protocol. So we don't know if he's going to be back for this round um, either. But... Yep. We're going back to Oakland. We got some fun stuff to talk about as far as last year race, so let's get right into it. This is our track trends. So Oakland. Yep. Heading back to Cali. Uh, 2019 was the fourth race last year. Always a day race. It is uh, this year, too. Yep. Good is ruts. because bad things happen in Oakland <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, it's is always it a day race. <laughs> uh, good ruts. No, but really, is that why they do it? I mean, I'm... I'm assuming that's what it's. I, I wouldn't want to be there. I wouldn't be around that stadium at nighttime. Yeah, so it's a day race. Get your picks in early. Uh, good ruts. Whoops, break down pretty good. Yep. Most of the time they're jumping through them. Webb dominated there last year. Whole Had shotted, a, yeah. won the whole thing. He was gone. Usually has a sweet wall jump. They do this year too. Yep. And it was a KTM sweep there last year. Yeah. So last year it was Webb, Muscan, Baggett, Tomac, Rocks in your top five. So it was. It was a KTM podium sweep. So here's what I would take away from this trace and this weekend. And excuse me, I. Recovering from a cold, <coughs> so I will be coughing. But, uh, yeah, against a day race. But Webb, who hasn't really challenged for a win yet, this race he won last year. Mm -hmm. And Webb's been really bad in the whoops. The, you know, elephant in the room. Yeah. He gets passed there a lot. So, But this weekend, it's a shorter whoop section, and the whoops always break down really bad. I watched last year's race. They were just jumpers the whole time. There's a reason he won that one. Yeah, um, so it's looking good for Webb this weekend if he can pull a good start to get his first win of the year. Other I than agree. that... Yeah, they had the wall jump and they were just a straight sand section. I think they do it more just to slow down the track a little bit. But yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. It's nothing like Tampa a few years ago, but, but still. It looks, it's kind of a different layout. It's a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. He's not, not going to be as fast as Glendale, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, I'm kind of curious to see what goes on this weekend. Looks I think good. we could see a weekend where somebody 
who hasn't won yet really mixes it up. That's my prediction. I like it. But to give you guys some good stats to help you make your picks, let's get right into it. This is the Top Contenders. Okay, we have our top contenders out for Oakland. We got to start with Ken Roxon. He's just been dominating. He has the best starting average at 2.3 and finish of two per gate drop of anyone. Wow. I mean, Anderson has the next best average, average start, and it's 5.67. But how lucky did Kenny get in that triple crown with the red flag? Because him and Tomac in that third one, hey. they were back there. But I know, hey. stars line. Better be lucky than good sometimes. That's He'll true. take it. Okay. You know, so uh, he has the most laps led this year at 68, ahead of Tomac at 18. Jeez. Which he really is on fire. He's all, He only led 55 laps all year last year, so he's already passed that. Um, he's finished in first or second in the three races he's qualified fourth or better at. And the first time he's led laps in three races in a row. So, well, well, what's his last stat? 2013 was the last time the leader in points after round four didn't win the championship? Yeah, I had to look that up. Went back a lot farther than I thought it would. And that was when Millsaps was leading and Dungey ended up coming back and winning it. Literally, it's been seven years. Yeah, so if you're in points lead after round four, it's looking good. Holy cow. So. All right, Eli Tomac has his second best average finish of 3.17 and the eighth best average start of 8.5 <laughs> per gate drop. That is so bad. It's crazy. His starts see. were a little bit better last week, but yeah. we called this stat out in the show and it came true. It said that Tomac in every Triple Crown last year had at least one start outside the top 10. Yeah. What happens? He did it. He, Main's one and two. He's right up in the mm-hmm. front. Third main, he's like right around 10th place. Like he had that one bad start you knew was going to happen. And nope. there you go. But he, uh, he started first and fifth in the first two mains last week. So he starts to get better. Good, like yeah. they've, they've improved a little bit. Um, and he's led laps in the last two rounds. So he just was on Roxon's tail and couldn't pass him, which was yeah. kind of scared me. But anyway, we'll see how it goes, though. What about Barsha? Um, his last three overall finishes, <coughs> five, nine, and two. But he didn't finish better than sixth in any of the mains at the Triple Crown, mm-hmm. which kind of blew my mind when I so found that out. So kind of deceiving one. <clears throat> yeah, I thought he was doing better than that. Uh, finishing on average four spots ahead of where he qualifies, finished six spots ahead of where he qualified in Oakland last year. So if he's not qualifying, great. Don't worry yeah. about it. Hasn't led laps since A1, though. So I don't know when it's time to I don't know. And his starts haven't been as good as you thought they were going to be. So I really, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He, unfortunately, he's not a top five guy. I think w- what we've seen so far is riders starting to sort themselves out, mm-hmm. and we're starting to see who's going to be there each and every week. And right now, Barsh is just not one of those guys that you can trust. He's in my fourth, fifth type range at best. Right now, All right. So. Jason Anderson, when is this guy going to win? Because here's his his uh, starts his, so far this year. He just went third last weekend, but he went five, three, five before that. So if this man is not in your top five, you are insane. <laughs> Because I pulled him out last minute last week. <coughs> He's yeah, the only rider so far this season to be in the top five every round. Yep. So you got to put him there. And he's finishing less than one spot from where he qualifies. Mm-hmm. So look at where he qualifies. You stick him right in that area. But I like it. But if this man pulls a whole shot, I know he has the speed to win. His starts haven't been the great. They've been good enough. They've been good. To crack him in that top five, but not good enough to where if Tomac or a Roxon are ahead of you, you're probably not going to catch him. Yeah, I can agree with that. Okay, Webb. Uh, Webb, 20 points down in the championship right now. It blows my mind. I mean, yep. it's, it's not a good look. His, but his finishes haven't been that bad. His last four finishes, 4-3, four, 12-3. Three, three. His average start at the Triple Crowns was seventh, so not the greatest. But he did have two mains where he started second. So yeah. He had one bad start, two really good ones. Mm-hmm. And in 2019, Webb had six wins. And only one of those, he started outside the top three. So he's got to get a good start to get something going. Yeah, in. he basically whole shot it in one or was like second in one yeah. every race. So, won, so We'll see where he qualifies. But Ricky Carmichael said it. If Cooper Webb doesn't start beating Tomac and Roxon very soon, you're more you're almost a full race out, 26 I mean, points. almost and a at third that, of the way season At done. that point, you're in desperation mode if you're Cooper Webb. So I actually picked him to win this week because of the track. And this guy's he has to start winning. I think we're going to start seeing that a little bit more. A little more urgency. Could buy me. Yeah. All right, well, there you have it. Those are top contenders now. Let's get into it because we see it each and every week. The riders here not expecting to crack the top five. Here it is. This is Weekly Spoilers. Okay, so based off the players' picks and what we think, point standings, all things considered, these are the riders we think you know have a little bit longer shot to crack the top five. 
We'll start with Zach Osborne. I heard he got black flagged in the third main. Yeah, I heard about that. I don't know. So I guess between the red flags, he when left when the, went down, he went outside the stadium. Yep. And then came back and started. And they didn't catch it in time. After, and not before he took Baggett out. On accident. So there's a lot of little controversy yeah. there. So It was a rough night for Osborne. It was a very so. bad night. But in standard rounds, he's been solid. His start average is 5.6, and his finishes are 3-1 and one over the last two. So on average, he's finishing four spots ahead of where he qualifies. So last two standard rounds, he's 3 and or his average start yeah, is 3-1. Yeah, starts 3-1, one. One, sorry. All right, so the man, and then you look at the first main, dude hole shot it but then went down. Yeah, and I had him pick second. Pulled, it good. pulled a Tomac and yeah. just washed the front. Yeah. But his starts are there. He just had some bad luck last weekend. But I think he's a safer bet for top five than Barsha yeah. any day I see right him now. bouncing back. Okay. Malcolm Stewart. Uh, dude, when's this guy going to crack the top five? <laughs> he's got to do it. He's been but, like the longest rider not to do it. Everyone's pulling for yeah, him. Yeah, his, aver- his average finishes so far, including that triple crown, is 7.5. So he's right there. But here's what you need to look at. He's finishing two spots from where he qualifies, but he hasn't finished ahead of where he qualifies yet. Mm -mm. So he needs to do that. Yeah, you got to look at his qualifying and just know, okay, he's either going to be right there or maybe a spot or two behind. Because a dude like AC can throw down a heater, doesn't always translate to the race time, though. If he's qualifying third, fourth, fifth, (coughs) is what I'm really going to consider. Yep. So. All right. Now, speaking of Blake, or Justin Brayton, your boy. Justin Brayton. I just call him that because you always call everyone my boy, so he's your boy now. <laughs> yeah, I like Brayton, uh, even though he let us down on the wild card. But oh, it was what so do we close. do? What it do looks do? so good. <laughs> he's been doing awesome. I mean, his first three finishes have been seven, eight, eight, seven. His starts have gotten worse every round, though. I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully, he'll rectify that this week. Yeah, uh, he's so. You would think you always think of Brayton as a really good starter. Yeah, something's going on. But he's been finishing 3.75 better than qualifying, and his starts at Glendale, 14, 9, and 13. So we're going to need him to get a good start to get in there. I don't see him chasing down a lot of the dudes yeah, in front of him. Yeah, and he's even said it before where he doesn't. I know Daytona, he won that, but he wasn't expecting that. And rutted tracks, he's said this before, are not his thing. So and then probably he goes not going to. So you yeah, never we'll know see. with Brayton. But. Blake Baggett, this man, like Zach Osborne, just had terrible luck last weekend and the weekend before that. But. His last four races, he went 10th last weekend. He was 4, 9, 14. So his average standard round gate drop is 9. So he needs to get his starts figured out. Mm-hmm. If Blake gets a start, he has the speed to run up front. But what do you do there? <clears throat> but he is finishing about 4.5 or 4.7 spots from where he qualifies. And he did finish on the podium last year in Oakland. Yeah. I, it's only a matter of time. It just seems like he starts the season slow every year. Why are we acting surprised? I don't know. What do you got for AC over here? AC, the the fan favorite, the dude's getting picked to win like legendary numbers, and he hasn't even been in the top five last People three rounds. People are on that. Yeah, it's like the Tomac train got switched to AC. Uh, he's just tempting us. He's qualified first every round. I know. I mean, you I can't... fell for it last week too. I pulled out Anderson, put AC, and it bit. Did me. you really? Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, but last I ha- week was all about starts. He bro. was looking good till the That's third why main I put when Roxen he went up, down. Roxon had good starts. Okay. I don't know. What are stats though? He, he hasn't finished the top five since A one. He's finishing on average five. 5.75 behind qualifying, which he's been first every round. <laughs> and his average start about, you know, somewhere back 6-7. So I don't know. I don't know about AC. Maybe this round does it for him. You can't really take anything from qualifying because he's going to be one of the fastest dudes. At this point right now, I feel like AC is kind of like a web where you really got to get like that top three start. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, he's just hitting the dirt a lot. We need to, to, yeah. s- to stop doing that as well. So. <laughs> well, there you have it. That is the weekly spoilers. Who do you guys think is going to crack the top five first? Is it going to be Malcolm Stewart or Justin Brady? If you could pick one. To crack the top five? Yeah. Well, AC's already done it. Osborne's already done it. I'd say Malcolm. This, week, yeah, this well, weekend? Malcolm too. Oh, man, I don't know. Him or, him or Baggett, honestly. Yeah. In my top two. Well, we got to talk about it because this weekend, wild card is 13th. And guess who's looking good again? <laughs> Vince Freeze. Let's get right into it. This wild card watch. <laughs> All right, so for the wild card watch this week, it is 13th place. Well, what are we wasting our time here? We know everybody's going to pick for <laughs> And the stats back it up. <laughs> this man had a three-peat to start the year. Yeah. He is the people's wild card champ. But first, let's talk about Justin Hill here. And a little, a cool little story is on the RM Fantasy Instagram page. We're just giving stats. That's it. Yeah, we just get the stats here. But I think underscore Sarah, if I'm saying that right, posted 
just tag Justin Hill. That's who I'm picking for my wall yeah. card. And Justin replied back and said, don't do that. I'm with Justin. I don't agree with it. I don't think 13th is. All right. Good. Well, I think he's going to do so better than that. Hill's finishes on the year are 12-12, 11-11. Uh, he did get, he's been caught up, caught up in some carnage, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're right. He's better than that because, um, he's finishing about four and a half places worse than his qualifying. So mm-hmm. you can look at where he qualifies, but his starts haven't been that bad. He's, he's actually solid. been inside the top 10 in five of the six total gate drops so far this year. That's solid. He's just got to have a little bit more speed or maybe he does needs things to go his way a little bit more, yep. but. I could see he'll be one of those spoilers cracking the top five soon. I, yeah, I believe that, too. My prediction. Okay. Dino. Dean Wilson, he's been a lot better than 13th, it feels like. But when you look at his results, he's been 13, 10, 13, 13. Whew, so he might be a solid choice. for his money. I mean, we all know they're better than that, but a 13th right now is not a 13th towards the end of the season. I mean, yeah, everyone's true. still there. It's it's very competitive. So well, I like and, Wilson. Yeah. Get get to your boy Freezy. <laughs> Freeze Let's go tell everyone why so, he's gonna do it. Because he's three peated the first three, <laughs> and last week we told you seventh place was not him. Would but someone comment low check. key he's playing. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone commented the... thinking that Freeze is playing fantasy and purposely gets himself uh, in the wild card spot. I can which, guarantee which he's I'm not. starting to think is happening. <laughs> How do you three peat? It's funny. But here's some stats on Freeze. His average finish, including the triple crown, twelve point two five. His average finish per gate drop is twelve. He's right and, around there. Yeah, and his his finishes in Glendale were 13, 12, 12. And he's finishing about 4.3 spots from qualifying. So between him and Dino, I got to go freeze, though, dude. He <sighs> finds his way yeah. to the wild card. I'm really leaning towards freeze. You really as well. think Plessinger's a 13th guy? I mean, it just doesn't feel right. But it's like I'm saying, the field is so stacked that yeah. these dudes, I mean, it's just kind of the way it goes. That's not a knock against them at all. I mean, there's a lot of names not even making the main that blows my mind every week. So, Plessinger, his average standard round finish is 12.33. He's just been been around that range. Around there? Yeah, I mean, and then let's let's get to your boy, Martin. Martin, <laughs> whole shots. I love this guy. I don't know why. I was not even a fan of him in 250s, but for some reason. He's just, fun to cheer for. He's just the guy that can mix it up. Yeah. He's fun to watch because he crashes all the time. Like, I don't wish bad on any No, rider, he's just a good dude. You just, you just kind of always watching, like, what's it going to be this weekend? It's a wild ride every time. <laughs> I, I just don't know. But his average finish per gate drop is 13.5, and he's finishing 2.6 from qualifying minus St. Louis where yeah, he DNF. Yeah. So, so, uh, good choice. I also like Tyler Bowers in this range as well. It's probably going to be between Bowers and Freezy for me. I don't know. Really, Wilson and Freeze are my two, but... I'm going with Freeze. You I can't mean, you can't bet against that. No. All right. Well, now I'm actually really pumped because we've got him on the phone. We're gonna get him on the phone. The OG, the legend, one of the OGs of freestyle legend motocross. Legend in the sport. Nate Patchy Adams yep. is calling in. So here it is. This is between two burns with Nate Adams. All right. So we have him on the phone. One of the most decorated freestyle motocross riders of all time. Nate, I'm going to say it, Nate Patchy Adams. Yeah, What's up, Nate? Right. <laughs> What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. So, first question, Nate. You've been around a long time. I think we're the same age. You 35 or 36? I'll be 36 in March, so creeping I'm, up there. Man, I'm older than... Oh, I'll be 35 in just a, actually tomorrow. About our age. Yeah. Oh, well, happy birthday. Oh, thank I you. I got you by nearly a year. Yeah. Now... <laughs> Nate, mm. you're one of the. We could say you're one of the OGs in the freestyle NX scene. You've and in the moto rap game, let's not forget about moto that, rap so. game is strong. You've been around a long time. <laughs> Y'all remember that, huh? That was some years ago. Dude, I'm <laughs> a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nate, give us a little background. Did you start out racing Supercross, motocross? Kind of, how did you get to the freestyle NX scene? And and kind of give us a little, you know, brief update on what you're still doing today. Uh, man, I kind of had a, a roundabout way uh, of getting into Supercross and stuff. But no, I was into freestyle long before that, but. Let me back up even before that. I had got my first bike when I was around seven or eight, uh, 1983 CR60, and this was in uh, about 1993, I believe. So I was the only one at the track on a Honda CR60, but uh, I just loved it. Absolutely was in love with it, you know, begging my dad for a bike, and then took me to tracks. I didn't race till I was on 80s, probably road 80s for six months or more, and did some racing, 125s, uh, 250s as well, but... By the time I was racing on 125s and 250s, um, I had already, like, you know, Crusty Dean was a dirt, the Fox Terra Firma mm-hmm. videos, Steel yeah. Roots, like, MC was the man. Like, that was just the type of riding I had gravitated to because that was, you know, uh, 
one of you know many of just uh i guess just average speed racers you know and, mm-hmm. and we didn't ride m- more than once a week max sometimes once a month so just my parents are working people and we didn't refinance the house and get a coach motorhome and travel the country <laughs> racing the nationals but uh anyway by the time i started racing on 125s 250s i was already doing tricks and sometimes i got to race for free if i just put on a little jump show so you know free riding freestyle was definitely more my thing i, got, I could do more of it for for cheaper and, mm-hmm. and and all that um started doing freestyle motocross competitions and a few years after that uh i i had you know enough money i had, I had my own truck had a couple bikes in the garage and uh, i went back and tried a couple supercrosses but um uh, but that was it just for fun and always in between my, my freestyle competitions, usually in the off season, I just train all off season and usually didn't have much going on in December, January. So I try Anaheim or Salt Lake city. I tried one year, made the mm-hmm. night show, bike broke practice, couldn't ride the night show, you know, that oh, old, that old chestnut, but that was it. That's how I got into That's professional awesome. freestyle and, and tried a few super crosses and, and, uh, still riding, not competing anymore, but, uh, I feel like I've, uh, I've proven myself there. Like I said, I'm nearly 36, so chilling more at home, spending time with family, and, and uh, making a living other ways than just on my bike. Right I'd on. say that. He's a five-time X Games gold well, medal I d- champion. I just got to say, the first freestyle motocross show I ever was a part of was in Texas, I think back in 07 or 08, uh, X Fighters, Fort Worth, Texas. Blew Ooh, my, blew okay. my mind. I, didn't, I was actually hurt in 08 when it was there, but I was oh. there in 09. That was awesome. It blew my mind. All right, Christian, next question for him. <clears throat> so we know you've been racing, riding, freestyling for a long time, so you probably have a laundry <coughs> list of injuries like a lot of these dudes. Um, I just want to get your take on like a Ken Roxon, Dean Wilson type of situation where they have major injuries just back-to-back and how hard it is mentally to come back from that and if anything really helps. It's extremely tough. You know, having one injury is tough enough. And then when you, like, get back on the bike after that injury, there's just, like, life is just brand new again. Everything's awesome. Like, you're feeling a purpose again. You're back to doing what you love. You're good lap times. Or, you know, for me, it's the tricks are on point. I don't have to, you know, it doesn't take me five tries to get a Superman flip. It's first try every time I'm on point. First contest back, bam, you're hurt again. Like, mm-hmm. the the mental <laughs> defeat that you experience in the ups three, and four, sometimes five in a row. Yeah. It can just really beat a man down. And, uh, you know, there is an upside cause you know, you know, guys like Ken rocks and Dean Wilson, these guys are champions and, and they're always going to come back. Right. But we all have a window as professional athletes, not, not even just freestyles or dirt bike racers, but you all have a window. We all have a window and we all feel the pressure of that. So I think it, it resonates with, uh, on a side note with fans, like, I'm a Dean Wilson fan because yeah, Dean's awesome on a dirt bike and stuff, but mm-hmm. he keeps coming back from these injuries. And yeah. sometimes we can just look at it and be like, man, that was bad luck. Like what happened on rocks and second arm injury with Cooper mm-hmm. Webb, like that, yeah. like what did he do wrong? Like nothing, nothing really wrong. It just happened. And yep. man, when, when you come back from that, you can earn something that you can't otherwise, which is respect of fans. And mm-hmm. even the riders around you, even if you're not friends, they know, yeah. I know that you're going to have to kill that dude to get, make him not show <laughs> yeah. up at the races anymore and be a threat. But, yeah. uh, man, what it, what Ken and Dino are doing just shows their hearts. And, and uh, man, I think those guys are probably two of the crowd favorites. And not just because they're the, some of the fastest riders in the world, but because what they can overcome. And these yeah. stadiums on the weekend are filled with riders or ex-riders or people that almost made it or people that do it for fun and can understand, can grasp a bit of what these guys go through every day, even in, yep. in the season, off season, what, how fit they are, how trained they are. And, uh, those injuries can definitely, you know, earn us respect and, and, uh, and, and be a fan favorite if, if for nothing other than just overcoming those adversities. Yeah. yeah no pretty doubt. wild. So yeah, they, here's a question that I've been curious to ask and <laughs> it might seem a little off topic, but, you freestyle motocross guy, looking at the group of riders that we have right now in Supercross, who do you think, maybe it's one, two, maybe three riders, who do you think could leave Supercross right now and make the biggest splash in the freestyle MX scene? I, <laughs> who got, would you like to my see? My pick would be Justin Bogle because he's always throwing the one leg swag mm, over the finish line. Yeah. But who do you think would Bogle's make the biggest splash? a lot splash? of style, yeah. Um, Man, well, I was already talking about one of them, but I would say, yeah, Bogle. So let's say three. Bogle, uh, Roxon, 
and I would say Anderson. Yeah. All those guys like have a, Anderson. in my opinion, just an awesome like flowy style. Um, especially uh, you know, you, I, I can just look at those guys, and maybe it's because I already know how that, how well they free ride. I've seen Roxton free ride with Twitch and all those guys, and and uh, but man, I just think their style, even on a track, shows that they're just not not good at just racing or riding a mm-hmm. rutted track or a dry hard pack track or big whoops. Like these guys just are all around riders. I think they could go do any type of riding if they put their heart and mind and, and all their focus on it they could be you know any type of professional motorcycle rider and i think i think those three Vogel, anderson rocks and those dudes could leave racing and probably dominate the free ride for <laughs> scene if they really focused <laughs> on it honestly so who's your who's your favorite rider to watch on a supercross track oh man i honestly probably can't pick just one and those three guys we mentioned are some of them eli is tomac is absolutely amazing mm-hmm. Um, just hit his style and how he rides the bike and steers with the back wheel and his, his aggression. Like when he's on, like how can anyone? Like even Carmichael was talking about it in one of the recent uh, race Supercross races. He's just like, what do you do when he's this <laughs> on? Like there's nothing anyone can do. It's just absolutely amazing to me if someone can be that fast on a dirt bike. But then the seven days. Honestly, I, I, I'm a fan of Supercross. I, I admire every guy. Yeah. I even watch the bubble positions. I'm like, I cannot believe you know. How is Kyle Cunningham on the bubble? Like, that guy's so fast. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I just have so much respect for all racers. Didn't the Seven Deuce do say that it's different when Tomac passes you? It's like you uh, hear it from a mile away yeah. and Thunder just goes past you. <laughs> well, he just rides different. Yeah. Kenny rides so low in the RPM. Mm-hmm. Tomac and Barsha at the rev limiter a lot. So you, you know who's behind you probably. Probably. You could probably take a guess and be like, that's either Barsha or Tomac, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we got one more question for you. And All right. It's fantasy, so mm-hmm. you, we got to talk a little picks here. We're getting picked. We're getting into the season. I mean, round five now. The the top five are kind of you know solidifying their places. But is there another rider that might be out of those popular picks that you think might be worth a look here going into Oakland, like a Malcolm, uh, Brayton, those types of guys? Can never count Brayton out, especially um, saw what he could do at Daytona. I mean, mm-hmm. Oakland's usually fairly rutted and rough so mm-hmm. yeah that's a that's a great pick can't keep can't keep uh Brayton out of the scope there I think Anderson's due for one um I man and, and honestly I think uh Zach Osborne can make a splash this year he's been yeah. up there but just had you know not I guess not silly little crashes some of them kind of kind of yeah. been big I think yeah. in Anaheim when he kind of jumped to the side of that tabletop that was a pretty big wreck but mm-hmm. Just been little mistakes for Zach, and I think he's got the speed, and, and he's got that another guy with this really fluid style and can kind of hang it out, maybe appear to be on the edge of control, but still be in <laughs> control. I think I think Zach goes due for one. Yeah. All right. So like is it. that would Zach be your pick for this weekend? Um. Well, see, that's 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 the fan and you rooting, but you picking who I think is going to win? I'm picking Webb. Uh, he won last year there, and the whoops this week are short, mm-hmm. and they break down, so they're just jumpers anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. Webb's a good pick, but I'm gonna say if the track's getting rough and gnarly, like it usually doesn't open, I'm gonna pick Tomac. Yeah, he's I the guy. Right. And when it gets, it doesn't, it can't get too rough for that guy. Since uh, he goes faster, the rougher it gets. When yep. you said a Tomac fan and then rough track, I was like, he's gonna pick Tomac. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. All right, well, Nate. Hey, thanks so much for calling in. Question: Do you have a Christian? Do you have a quick question about his rap game? I'm just saying. I'm a big fan from the rap Nate Patchy Adams. If you have Adams. not listened to his albums, they're on Spotify. Dude, you gotta I do used it. to bump it all the time back in the day. Is there any what? chance, you know, what do we got to do to make it happen? We need you featured on the next Seven Deuce Deuce <laughs> song, something like that. <laughs> hey, if, if uh, Entic Matt wants to let me on a song, I'll be down. I mean, I still rhyme. There you go. There Obviously, you go. other things have, have uh, in life, you know, with my career winding down, it was a bigger change than I thought, just finding a new way to you know, kind of roll into the next phase of life, being a dad. So I don't have a studio in my house anymore. Long story short is I don't rhyme as much as I used to, but not nearly as much. But, man, if an opportunity like that came up, I'd be, I'd be back to the notebook and pen and be sharp enough to Sounds like we sure. need to get Adam let's on make the phone. This happen. Let's do it. We need an official <laughs> fantasy rhyme. That's, That's right, what we need dude. right there. No better people I'm in, to do I'm it. down. Get in, snap on board, and we'll make something happen. <laughs> We're going to awesome. make a call, make a couple calls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nate. Well, hey, man, we appreciate you calling in. I, you're by far one of my favorite yeah. people to call in. Like the OG, I'm like shaking. One of the I'm OGs of Freestyle MX is on the phone right now yeah. talking to us. Big like, that's, fans. That's big a dream fans. come true right there. Yep. 
appreciate it, guys. I appreciate that big time. All right, Nate. Well, hey, you know what? Good luck with everything you got going on, and we'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. All Have right, a good we'll one. see ya. Dude, I just love that guy. Dude, he is genuinely just one of the nicest he's, dudes I've He's talked. impossible to not root for and like. And you heard him. Guy. Tomac's his pick. We disagree there, but you know what time it is. Time to lock him in. Let's do it. All right, so for my lock him in picks, here's who I have right now. Cooper Webb needs to start beating Tomac and Roxon. He knows that. So, so you think pure motivation-wise? Out of pure motivation okay. and that he won there last year with the whoop section not going to be really whoops, I'm going Cooper Webb. Tomac, you know this guy can ride a rough, nasty track. Mm -hmm. I'm still going K-Rock to round out the podium. Um, Jason Anderson, got to have this guy in your top five. Malcolm Stewart. I think this is going to be the week that he finally cracks the top awesome. five. He's a huge Raiders fan. <laughs> yeah, he is. So I'm going to go him fit, and then I got to do it. Vince Freeze for the wild card. I like your picks. You've been doing well. I've been doing horrible, so I'm copying a few here. I am going to put Tomac to win. I just, I don't know. No matter where he starts, he's always a threat, and I like okay. that. Webb, I'm going second because I'm with you. He's got to start making up points somehow. Roxon. I mean, I don't know how well. I mean, you're you're on that type of high of just dominating. Starts are good. He's there. Yeah, I'm gonna keep him in third. It's really you're banking on Webb getting a better start than Rocks, and that's how I feel yeah, right now. I agree with that. Anderson fourth. I mean, I'm not. I'm leaving him in there, no doubt, in the top okay. five. I learned that lesson. Malcolm Stewart. I love Malcolm, but I just think uh, Zach's gonna have a comeback week after last week was rough for him. And Vince Freezy, I'm sticking with it. Vince Freezy Gotta Nation wild card. <laughs> Champ. If this man wins a wild card for a fourth time, we got to do some sort of t shirt. Or... <laughs> we got to do something. Well, he's going to call in. That's what we're going to get that man to call in. The we show. need to hear his secrets. So. <laughs> well, there you have it. Those are our picks. They are locked in. Remember, watch qualifying because you get really good info watching Jim and Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about, you know, on Race Day Life, you haven't downloaded the NBC Sports Gold app. That way you can watch the qualifying. Once you're done with qualifying, then come back, watch the show again if you need to, yeah. to kind of solidify your picks. But remember, you can listen to this in podcast form. And as always, we appreciate everyone that watches, that comments. We love the feedback. We love the comments. We love talking to you guys. So mm -hmm. keep it coming. But most importantly, who's your picks for this week? I want to hear them. Who's it going to be? Yeah, a lot of people had good picks in the comments. Let's see them again. Yeah, but now we got to talk about it. This is why you want to play RM Fantasy SX. Here it is. This is our weekly prizes. Week 5, Oakland Weekly Prizes. Here's what the top scorers are going to get. First place, three sets of Bridgestone Battlecross tires. Second place, a Fox V3 helmet. Third place, Bell Moto 9 MIPS helmet. Then other prizes from Fly Racing, Fastway, Pro Honda, TLD, Galfer, Scott, and the Cherubies. And, of course, 90 Rocky Mountain gift cards. Nice. And for grand prizes this year, at the end, we're giving away some killer prizes. First place, taking home a Race Prepped Factory Edition KTM 450 SXF. Second place, getting a two-stroke this year. 250 SX. Big. We got a trip to Monster Energy Cup, a year supply of Dunlop tires, Alpine Stars gear casual package, Tusk Impact wheels, Honda Generator, Fly Racing again with the gear package, Milestone video games, console, TV, and game, Motion Pro tool set, and Oakley spending spree. That's right. So that is it. That's why you want to play an Arm Fantasy SX. But we got one more prize for you, Christian. One more promo. This week for all the S experts out there, use the banner on our website. Head over to RockyMountainATVMC.com and pick up some Tusk T Compact T-Handle wrench sets. Limit two for $9.99 each. The code is Tusk T-Handle. $9.99 each. Offer in soon. a bargain. Yeah, it's a screaming Go deal. Go get some. Well, there you have it. That's our Fantasy S experts. Remember, it's free to play. It's never too late to sign up because you can always be in it to win a weekly prize show. RMFantasySexperts.com. Create your account. Make your top five picks in the wild card. Watch the show. And have a good time watching Supercross. That's right. I'm Chase. I'm Christian. We'll see you next week.